Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's meetup. On today's agenda, Lindsay will be providing an overview of the new election results and my elective representative solutions. As a reminder, we'll be recording and posting this meetup on meetup.com shortly after the presentation. During the meetup, if you'd like to make comments or chat with other participants, then use the chat pod. However, if you would like to submit a question for the team to answer, then please submit it through the Q&A pod. With that said, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Lindsay. As soon as I unmute my phone. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks, Heather. <clears throat> so uh, as Heather said, I'm Lindsay and I'm part of ArcGIS for Local Government, the Solutions Division. And I primarily focus on web applications and our election solutions. And so 2016 is here. The primaries have begun. And, and I think everybody, whether or not they work in elections or not, they've got elections on the mind. So um, let's get to it. Um, let's make it easier for citizens to find out two things, who's winning or who's won in my local precinct or jurisdiction, and who are my um, elected representatives, whether that's people looking for incumbent information before they're voting or um, who is currently representing them after the election has happened. So by making it easier on citizens to find out this information, we who work in local and state election agencies or work for the county clerk's office or anybody who's working um, to get election results tabulated out to out to our citizens and out to the public. Um, we want to make it easier. And we've got two apps that are going to help you do that. So the first app we have is My Elected Representative. And the second app is Election Results. And both these applications are fully supported by Esri Support Services. So if you have a problem standing these up, you can call Esri Support Services and it'll help you out. Um, secondly, these are available today to download from our solution site for no additional cost. So if you have ArcGIS and you want to use, um, use these, these solutions, you can go ahead and, and get started and, and download those. So let me, let me just get right to it and I'll show you the My Elected Results, My Elected Representative app. So this application is a configuration of ArcGIS Online, and it's meant for citizens to find information about who is representing um, them at the state, local, state, county, federal uh, levels of government. So if I come in here and I search for my address, um, Naperville, Or I could simply just click on the map. And when I, when I do that search, I'm going to get uh, a lot of information. I'm going to find out who's representing me at the local level. So who's representing me at the city council level, the county commission, uh, the state levels, as well as the federal levels. And what's, what's neat about this is I'm seeing this across all levels of government. Um, and I can go ahead and I can say click on Learn More. And if I open that up in a new tab, that's going to take me to um, the City of Naperville's web page. And you can see that the, the city councils there who are representing me at the city level. And so that's the, the My Elected Representatives app. Pretty straightforward. So what, what's made up of this? So the solution has actually three components. It has data and a map, and that's used to create the map of representative districts. Um, it also uses information lookup, which is just part of ArcGIS Online. So it's a configurable app that's in ArcGIS Online that we take advantage of. And then we have some solution site documentation that will walk you through the, the creation process. And so I'm going to show you how to configure this app. And one of the things I want to stress is this app is, is very configurable and it's very flexible. So if you're just if you're just a um, if you're a city and you just want to do this for council, you can do that. Or if you're just if you're a state and you want to do it for state, you can do that 
doesn't matter what your jurisdiction is, you can configure this app to, to work for you. So it all starts with, with really good data. So the, this is a map document that, that we provide you with some good data as well. And you can see um, the city council, um, the county commission, the different political, political jurisdictions listed on the left-hand side. But I want to draw your attention to um, the attribute table at the bottom, so county commissioners. And you can see there's a district name. Sorry, you can see the district name, but you can see the representative's name, their associated district website, as well as the party that they're affiliated with. So because the county commission has three, three positions um, related to one geography, you can see that we have that listed three times within the data. So if you want to use our schema, you can. Or if you have your own schema, you can use that. There's, there's no um, requirements here. But let's say your county only has one commissioner, or you have different, um, different representatives. You may have many or one. You can add as many fields or remove as many fields as you want to and, and just adjust the data to suit your, your, um, your situation and your representatives. So once you have your, your data dialed in, you have your good cartography all set up, you're going to publish this map using ArcGIS for server or ArcGIS Online hosted services. And then we're going to put that into um, put that into a map in ArcGIS Online. And so now that we've published this, magically we've published this to online and I've added it, I've pre-added it to my map. This is the map within ArcGIS Online. It looks very similar to what we saw in ArcMap. One of the things I want to draw your attention to is we've configured some really good pop-ups in this web map. So as I kind of click through um, here, you can see uh, I've added some fields. The, all this information is just coming from the data. So the party is Democratic, the senator name is, is Richard. Um, and then we have the Learn More button. And if I click on that, that's going to hyperlink me up to, to Richard's website. And so we've spend some time and, and making sure this is a really good pop-up and, and this means that we're going to have a really great app in the long run. So once you've saved your map and you've got it looking like you did, you select your base map or, or have everything dialed in, um, you can go ahead and share it. When you click on share, it's going to ask you who you, who you want to allow to see this map. And then finally, um, It'll allow you to share with with your constituents. So it's a little bit slow today. Sorry, I apologize. Got a couple couple things right on the machine. So what we what should see is, is when we share this in ArcGIS Online, it'll give us the ability to, to select a variety of configurable app, applications. And one of the application the application that we're looking for is called Information Lookup. And Information Lookup, once you create that application, you'll have several configuration options that you can set, and we'll guide you through that process in the documentation. And the result will be is an application that looks very similar to this. And if you remember looking at our pop-up that we configured in the map, it looks very similar to what you're seeing here on the right-hand panel. And you can see the um, you can see the county commission um, as well as uh, the county commission pop-up looks almost the exact same. If you click on learn more, it's going to hyperlink you out to that site. So the application is, is very, very much the same. If you want to configure the, this more, you can add a custom icon. So if you want to add it for your, if you want to just show city council, you can have a uh, city council or the city that you have, their icon. You can change the title. You can add a splash screen. And there's a variety of this configuration information um, that you can do with this app to make it your own. And we have um, 
some great help on the ArcGIS solution site explaining how to do that in information lookup. So if you come in here, you can you can check that out and update your app to kind of reflect the needs for your for your organization. And so with that, that's the my um, elected representative application, and I'm going to turn it over to questions from the group. Uh, so far, there's no questions related to the My Local Representative application. If you would I like, just keep on. oh, um, Kyle has a question. Information lookup has been ha behaving slowly. Is there any issues? Is this is is this because our data is stored on a server? Sorry, Kyle, is that, is that a question specific to a situation that you have now, or? He is responding. I think, uh, yes, our My Elective Rep is rather slow in the last month-ish. We can, I guess, take this offline and see yeah, if we can get it resolved. That. Yeah, let's follow up after the call and, and, and see if we can troubleshoot that for you. It could be could be a variety of reasons um, why that's happening. So, OK. Cool. Great. Um, any other questions, Heather? Um, um, actually, there is one question. Does the app rely on data being in the local government information model, which I think you covered a little bit? Yeah, I can I can talk about that a little bit more. Um, it doesn't it doesn't have to be. So um, it could be you could you could put anything. Um, you could use your own schema or the local government schema. So um, the the schema that that I showed um, was just a, a good what I think is a good design, kind of based around. Um, what we've seen in, in, in local governments kind of doing this type of thing. Um, so if you want to take advantage of the work we did with that schema, you can absolutely use it. Um, if you don't or you have a really great schema already, uh, that's fine. You can use that as well. It's just uh, it, it's very flexible, so it can kind of take anything. Uh, Dave had a question. How long does this take to deploy, and what states are using this? Um, I could probably, if, if I had the data um, to deploy it, I probably could do it in in under under an hour, probably 30 minutes, if I'm honest. Um, it, it's really really simple to to deploy. Um, Scott, do you do you have any idea what states are are using this? Are you aware of any? No, I don't. But we could pull. I mean, we could pull certainly from the. Um, some of the reports we get from ArcGIS online and see essentially who's using it. Uh, yeah. D I Dave Shirell, uh actually just gave me a link to his. And I'll share that within the chat. Oh, well, great. Thanks. Thank you. I think, I think too, um, one of the, the nice things about this application is that you can embed it into a website. So if you want to take the the information lookup application with my elected representatives configured, you can embed that actually in a website, which is a nice feature for the public if they're going to be using the app. I think that is all the questions. Heather, um, Kyle yep. also had a question about the data source. I mean, the data source oh. is yours. so. You got, I mean, uh, one of the fundamental things you got to do before you get started, like Lindsay said, is kind of organize your district and kind of elected representative information and decide what levels of government do you want to show in the app. And once you have that, um, then you can kind of move forward pretty quickly with the configuration, as Lindsay said. Great. Uh, Lauren Lee also provided hers, which I'll also share. Um, and they, she said that she set it up in less than a day. So. Great, thank you. Thanks for sharing, everyone. Did you want to continue, so, uh, Lindsay? 
Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I was kind of waiting for you to give me another question, but then I figured if I start talking then I'll get one. Um, yeah, so I'm going to The next app I'm going to show is the election results solution. Let me just jump right back out. So the election results application is uh, for citizens or third parties interested in the election results that are they're coming in. Um, this application could be used for historical results or election night reporting. And it's a configuration of ArcGIS Online and Web App Builder for ArcGIS. And so the app's pretty easy to use. If you're a citizen, you, you could come in here and just click on your precinct or where you live, or you can go ahead head and search for a precinct or an address and get in, um, get information about the election results for that, that jurisdiction. And so I've, I've clicked on my place by Springbrook here and I can see the 2008 general election results for my precinct. Um, my neighbors and my, my, my precinct voted for, for Obama and I can see um, John McCain was, was pretty close and trailing behind. I go ahead and click on the next political contest. So um, as a representative for the 13th district, I can see um, the election results for that political contest as well. And I can see that Judy, um, the Republican candidate, uh, won out against Scott Harper. And so you can see there's some great information here about how many ballots were cast in this precinct as well as who, what party won that precinct. I also have um, the ability to check out voter turnout. So voter turnout for the, 20, the 2008 general election um, was 76% for this precinct. And you can see the number of registered voters and, um, and how many ballots were, were cast in that area. And this application is great. It is, is, is looking at a visualization of kind of voter turnout or, or different political contests um, as, we, as we zoom in and out here. So you can kind of see that most of the Naperville area in, in 2008 voted for, um, voted for Barack Obama. But this application is also flexible. So this, is, this application has been configured at the precinct level. Um, but you can configure it at a different jurisdiction as well. So here's an example of um, using state data at the county level. And if we click on Cook County in the Chicago area here, we can see the election results um, for the 2012 election uh, and the presidential candidate. And you can see that Obama, again, won on his home turf of Chicago. And if you wanted to flip over to the governor political contest that happened in 2014, you can see that Pat Quinn um, won in Cook County. And, and one of my favorite things is is if we zoom out and we look at the whole state of Illinois, you can see that that is the only county that he won. <laughs> so um, it's a great way to visualize election results and you can kind of see geographically, um, whether that's at the county level or the precinct level or any jurisdiction, uh, how people are voting. And you can con configure the application uh, for one political contest or many. Um, it's quite flexible that way. And so like I said, this could be used for general elections, special elections, uh, the primary elections, any, any sort of elections. Um, and it works really well if you want to display real-time election night reporting as well. Um, you can show historical results. So if you want to compare um, political races over um, presidential races over different years, you can do that as well. There's historical election results. And you can do this at many different levels, city, state, county, federal. And so the election results solution has four components. It has the data and the map that you can get. So um, that'll help you create a, a map of political contests and voter turnout if you, if you wish. Um, it uses Web App Builder for ArcGIS. And it, currently, it's using Web App Builder for ArcGIS Developer Edition. And we provide you a custom theme and custom widget that you can take advantage of. 
But next week, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, this will be part of ArcGIS Online Web App Builder, the hosted version. So you can take advantage of all that just within ArcGIS Online's organization. We also provide some tools to help support with election night reporting. And then we also have some documentation that will help you through um, the configuration process while you're creating the app. And so now I'm going to show you how to actually configure this. So I, I did you a demo of those, these two applications. And I'm just going to start this up while I'm thinking. And so it all starts with really good data. So again, this is the map document that we provide for election results. And you can see all on the left-hand side all the different political contests that we have, as well as the related um, data that's in the table. So the only requirement to use this uh, application is to have your data sorry, to have a feature class with a related table, uh, one-to-many relationship to um, your table with that election data. So because you're using, many of us are taking tabulated data and putting it into, into our GIS, um, that information is going to actually come into that table, which is related to the feature class that contains the geography of the political contest that you're mapping. So once you have your your data organized and everything ready to go, you're going to publish that via ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS for Server. And that will, again, open up. When, then we'll add that to our ArcGIS Online app. And so now that we've magically published and we, we see the um, election results are now in this application. I've gone ahead and made a few configurations. So just a few tips when you're creating your map for election results is uh, it's always good to have an overlay layer. So um, if it's precincts or counties or whatever jurisdiction, just have that jurisdiction um, with a hollow fill and a good label there. And that's a great way to, to kind of understand um, what, what political contest and the, the jurisdiction that you're actually looking at. And then you can see that um, I've turned off all of the layers in the map. So this is just another tip. You can turn all those off, because when we configure this in the widget, it's going to turn the layers on and off for us. Um, so you have like really kind of clear visual lines um, that are happening as you're switching political contests. So if you go ahead and save, and you share your map, then you can open it in. Um, Web App Builder. So this is Web App Builder, and I've gone ahead and I've I've already created part of the application, and so I'm just going to start by editing it. And so the the theme that we we prefer to use is called plateau theme. So <clears throat> I've gone ahead and selected plateau theme, which just really gives you kind of a minimalistic. Um, title bar with the widget. It allows you to kind of embed the widget in there, giving it a nice streamlined look and make it really easy to use. And you can select the style and color if you want. So if you prefer to use gray or orange, um, you can go ahead and set that there. I've already chosen my map. So the map that um, works for this meetup. So if I type in meetup within my organizational account, I can see that this is the map that I've selected here. And you can choose your choose your map. And then finally, we just want to set up the widget that is going to give you that great charting information. So the, the widget that we're using is called Related Table Charts because it's taking related table data and charting it. Um, that was the best name we could come up with. <laughs> um, you can click on it and go ahead and, and add it to your uh, to your, your application. And then you just click on it to, to kind of start that configuration. So right now it says the name of the, the widget is related table charts, but I actually am going to call this um, the 2008 general election. And this widget icon's all right. 
but I want to change it to something a little more election oriented. So I'm going to browse to my election result icon and and update that as well. So when you click on Add New, this is how you add a new political contest to be used in your application. So we click on Add New, and then it's going to ask you for the layer that you want to map. So if I go ahead and set, select President of the US, it's also going to populate the related table here. And if I select OK, you can see it's um, been added to my chart. And so we can put um, in here, so you can say general election 2008. You can put a really great description, um, and you can use field values to kind of drive dynamic content. So I know I have winning party information as well as total ballots. Um, I can say make a sentence out of this to describe in my chart. So the winning blank party on this precinct. So that'll populate with Demo likely Republican or, or Democrat within the description. You have a choice to do a, a bar chart or a pie chart. Um, the data field, uh, field series is going to be a numeric field, whether that's number of votes or percentage of votes. We can label it by candidate name. If you're configuring this for the primary, so you have a couple different Republican candidates and that color tends to be red, you can color it by theme. So everybody gets a different shade of red. Same with if it was a Democratic primary, you could do it with a, a variety of theme blue colors. Or if it is a general election, you can color by field value. You can say party, and then you can select the exact blue of the Democratic Party if you wish. Um, and same with the Republican Party. And this, uh, this color selector gives you a lot of kind of configurable properties and selectability. So if, if you are trying to make sure you match everything to party colors, you can go ahead and get that hex value and, and put it in there. And then label the bottom of the, um, of the chart. And when I say OK, and I select one of the precincts here. This is the one that I had made before we started, and this is the one that I just made when I was um, demonstrating to, to everybody on the fly here. So you can see the Democratic Party, Democratic Party has won this precinct. That was a sentence that we made. If I hover over Barack Obama, I can see there, there was um, 772 votes for, for him within this precinct. What's also cool is for configuration, you can kind of continue to add as many or as few um, political contests that you want, or maybe you want to do uh, configure it for voter turnout. A quick tip on, on kind of, you don't have to save to actually see what it's going to look like. If you click on the Layout tab, you can see what that is going to look like on the, um, on the chart, just kind of an estimate of, of how that's going to look and how that's going to feel. And if you do want to set this up for um, election night reporting, you can go in here and set the refresh interval. So you can set the refresh interval to um, zero. It won't update. But if you set it to 15 and you have election night reporting running every 15 minutes, you're going to see the map and the application and the charts update every 15 minutes. And so that's the election results app, and that's how you configure it. Um, once you've finished it, you can go ahead and save the app. And then you can deploy a local copy on your web server if you're using ArcGIS, um, sorry, Web App Builder for ArcGIS Developer Edition. If you wait till next week and you, you go through this process, then you can just stand up the application within ArcGIS Online. And so, where do you get all this stuff? So I keep on talking about the solution site and where you can download this from. If you come out to solutions.rts.com, you can see under local government and scroll and see many of the different areas that we support. But one of those areas is elections. 
and you can see a whole suite of election applications, the two that I showed you today, as well as some of our other election apps that you can get, and you can go ahead and download or learn more about those. And we have some great help documentation and information that can help you uh, walk through this process. So in saying all that, I'd like to, I can see a lot of people are asking some questions on out there, so let's turn it over to questions from the group. There were a few just about um, making sure that the app updates in real time, which I think you pretty much covered within the web app builder. Yeah, yeah, so there's one more. Um, I did forget one of my slides, so that's not helpful. Here we go. Um, so last night reporting. So one of the things we do provide is a great tool. for We have two tools, one for voter turnout and one for election results and the political contest. And so you can configure each political contest um, to run a script as a scheduled task. So if you want it to update every 15 minutes, you would set the tool to run every 15 minutes and populate the map with that um, information. And then you would go ahead and in that general setting with that interval, you would time it with every 15 minutes or every 10 minutes. So as your application's updating, your tool's updating, um, it's going to get the most recent information that's in there. Um, uh, Claire had a question about credit usage if you deploy it online. Does it consume any credits? Um, the app, so um, if you, if you publish, when you, every time you publish a service, it does, Scott, it just, can you, can you, can you take this one? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what the specific credits are, but it's just using feature services. So whatever the credits are associated with a feature size of your data, that will apply. But it's not much. I mean, you're not you're not shoving a lot of data in there, so I don't think it's that much. And and once a day, it's not charged per usage. So if you have you know right. ten thousand people getting the application, it's not going to cost anything. There's no cost to it um, to use the application. The other thing too is you could, you could source the data from Arctis for Server too. The, the only app to live in online is the, well the app doesn't even have to live online if you use Web App Builder Developer Edition, but the web map needs to come from online. So. Um, Kyle had a question. Will the widget configuration remain the same when it's hosted in ArcGIS online next week? The configuration, yes. So um, the only difference that uh, just one second, let me tap it on. The only difference that you're going to see in no, there's a few minor updates in terms of um, pixels. <laughs> so we did do some alignment issues in terms of of making it a little better that way. But you're still going to have yeah everything. Everything is pretty much the same. The only difference, yeah, there's no visual difference. So the user interface and the configuration process is going to be completely the same next week for this application. Uh, Claire had a question. What format does the input data need to be if running the election night reporting tools are in use? Yeah, so the election night reporting tool supports um, XLS, um, Microsoft, so Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Excel, um, XLSX, uh, CSV, comma, delimited, and comma, delimited text files. So those are the, the current um, supported, supported input formats to the tool. Okay, are there any other questions? I think that is it. Is there anything else at all, Lindsay? Yeah, yeah, I just was going to summarize. Sure, um, sounds good. Yeah, so um, election results and, and my elected representatives are part of um, 
a group of election solutions that we provide. So those um, <laughs> those those applications are sorry. Um, so those are available now. So you can go ahead and download those right now from our solution site. But there's also other great election solutions that are available. So there's the election polling place application, which is the classic, if I live here, where do I vote application, which um, supports direction. So you can see that on the screen now. Then we also have the early voting application. So this will support advanced polling, mail-in ballots, um, drop-off ballots, any sort of advanced polling application. And then finally, we have the polling place wait times uh, app that can be used at a poll, so people working at a poll can update um, what the wait times currently are, and people could actually see that in in either of these apps if you wanted. Um, so those are that's a kind of our collection of election applications that you can get today. And so. What's coming, and I've mentioned this a couple times, is, is next week we're going to have the hosted version of the theme and widget supporting election results, early voting, and election polling place actually within Web App Builder for ArcGIS. So there, you can take advantage of, of that hosted environment, which is it's flexible, scalable, you're leveraging the cloud. So all those things are there if you want to take advantage of it. But you also still have the flexibility that if you do feel more comfortable or you have um, different procedures where you want to keep that locally uh, on your own hardware, um, you can use develop Web App Builder Developer Edition to, to continue to do that. So there's, you have two really great options if you want to deploy it on-premise or if you want to deploy it in the cloud. Um, after next week, you'll have both options, and you can decide what's best for your, for your organization uh, that way. One thing I didn't mention um, related to this is if you want to secure your services, so sometimes we're concerned about election result data and, and kind of securing those services, we've got a great, great help topic um, that talks about securing that and kind of locking down those services if you're, if you're interested in that and that's a concern that you have. And then finally, too, if you, you know, a lot of people are able to do this um, themselves and stand it up, but sometimes folks want, want a little bit of help. We have some great prof ESRI professional services packages based around our election app, so if you need help, um, you can reach out to us or your account rep, and we can connect you with some, some folks to talk about those, those packages. And then I'll, I'll open it up for any kind of parting questions, or if anybody wants me to show some extra stuff, I can do that as well. Um, so far, Scott is handling a few. Um, Is there any other last-minute questions? Uh, Claire has a question. What's the difference in configuring between election night reporting and showing the final results? Um, the, the difference is just the configuration. So um, for election night reporting, you probably have a you're going to want to set up the application and your services to update every 15 minutes for um, kind of historical results or final results or canvas results, whatever you want to call them. Um, that's going to be static. So um, if you're doing election night reporting, you would need to have a um, you would need to set up your server or Arches Online to be updated and have the tool running. Um, you would also have to set that. Um, update interval on the application. So that's some of the things you need to do to make an election night reporting. Um, but if you just want to stand up kind of historical results or final results, um, you don't need to do any of that. And it's the same, it's the exact same widget. It's just how you kind of configure it to work. Um, Tim, I think, has a general question. Have you worked with voter centers? I don't know if you and Scott can answer that. No, I don't think we've, we haven't worked directly with them, Tim, we haven't. Okay, any more questions? Oh, well, oh, it's, so the, that's just, I was just looking it up. So that was his question, vote centers are, instead of precinct-based results, um, 
So now I'm catching up to him. Thanks. Um, so, I mean, you could use the same app to report the result. You just would aggregate the result either to a political contest or to maybe a county or ju other jurisdiction that you report. So Lindsay showed it today, you know, primarily around election results, and then she did show one example of the countywide reporting. The great thing about this version of the election results app is you guys can pick the geography that makes sense. Um, so it could be a political contest, I guess, in that case, Tim, right? You could report up based on the individual political contest and what geography that political contest uh, represents. So that's another example of how you could use it. Um, because at some level, they'll, they'll tabulate no matter what the geography is where people vote, they'll tabulate the winner um, political contest. So I guess you could report it that way um, if you wanted to. Um, and then Mike, Mike, had, a, Mike had a question. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, about, about the tabulation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that's probably the best way to do it, Mike, is to have some kind of either database view that spits out those reports that you could pick up and use. Or you could, um, depending on, yeah, it's probably the best, because I don't think you'll get the spatial features and the tabulation results in the same database. So probably the best way to do it would be get some kind of view or export from that tabulation system and use the tools we provide to update the features and the related records. And, and we actually had a customer um, do that, Scott. I can't his name is yeah, me, right. but yeah, yeah. We had worked through through that with him, and, and he had set it up with uh, with views and, and was successful in doing that. Great. There, last chance for questions. Are there any other questions out there? And to and to you know, folks, if you have any feedback that you want to send to the team, you know. Um, send it our way. We're, we're always taking it. You know, this, this application was first released in, in December this year, and it was an update to an older application that we had. So we try to take a lot of feedback into account, and we'd be interested to hear what you think or, or any improvements you'd like to see or changes you'd like to see, too. So um, feel free to reach out to us. Great. I'm Uh, Jay, the, we'll be posting this um, recording shortly after the meetup, so probably um, within an hour or two it should be available. The other thing, too, Lindsay, I don't know if we mentioned, I forget, is that there is a recording of the meetup you did back in, was that November, I think? Um, yeah, on it was the in election November. Polling places. Yeah, the election polls and the early voting apps, too. So those are still out there as well. We didn't cover those in a whole lot of detail today, but the video is there from the meetup last winter, fall, depending on where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'll go thanks ahead and wrap. Time. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us for today's meetup. We look forward to seeing and hearing from you at our next meetup which will be on March 30th, where we'll be presenting an overview of the local government 3D scenes. So until then, have a great afternoon, everybody. Take Thanks care. Everyone. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.